Hello. All right. Welcome back to the W. Ritz podcast, people. We are here today, and you know, it's our 10th episode, so we figured we ought to do something kind of unusual, maybe a little bit important. Mm -hmm. Um, So Will and I are going to be talking about the state of dating and relationships in modern America. But you see, we're two men, so we have that- What do we know? We have that idiotic masculine perspective. We're dumb. And plus, talking about dating with your homie—I mean, that's kind of gay. So we decided to have—we um, decided to have a woman on. We had Abigail Merwin back with us in the studio again. So thank you so much for coming on and giving us the feminine perspective. Thank so you, you can sit. Yes, you can talk now. But the problem <laughs> with you. just having Abigail on is that all three of us are single, and we don't really know what's going on in relationships unless we have someone who's actually yeah. coupled up. So mm-hmm. we decided to have our friend Anna on as well. Hey guys. And she has a very quiet voice, in case you couldn't tell. So, yep. yeah, so li- um, listen very closely. Hopefully, she has good stuff to say, even though it'll be quiet. She always has good stuff to say. Oh, thank you. I'm looking but, forward um, to it. This podcast was the miracle podcast, eh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, We've all been trying to p- plan this for a week and a half, two weeks. I don't know. But between Abigail and me, yeah. we managed to reschedule it three times <laughs> in the same day. So um, y'all better be this darn grateful that we're even here This is literally right the now. only day in the entire year that actually worked. Every <laughs> yeah, other day, pretty much. everybody was busy. <laughs> pretty, much. <laughs> pretty much. That's that's how it feels, for sure. Mm-hmm. But yes, we are talking about dating and relationships Oh boy, today. I'm excited. I'm excited. And it's our 10th episode, so that's definitely unusual yeah, we, we and special. we got to celebrate. Congratulations. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we're, we're quite flattered at ourselves. Yes, we're quite proud. <laughs> yes, be. just as we should be. Right? Mm-hmm. God hates the proud, but we're proud anyway. Oh my gosh. Anyway, um, <laughs> so <laughs> what should we start out here? What do you want to start with, Will? I don't know. You I choose. don't know. We should start out with something. You know, let's talk about... <laughs> with don't something. say. Let's, let's talk about... Um, as you can tell, we are very well prepared. Well, we are actually. We're just acting like we're not. Well, actually... We've we been ju- contributing notes to each other in the group chat. That's so true. There. Uh, let's, let's, let's focus in our first segment about dating in like the world, you know, when you think of the globe and worldly (laughs) culture, all that dating and all that. And then in the second segment, we'll get into dating in the church, which will be interesting because we all all have basically the same viewpoint on the world, I think. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the church, we're all going to be like different in a vending machine. Okay. All all probably pretty good, but some better than others. All right. All right. (laughs) Right, so okay. I, w- I want to start off with something relatively new to the world of dating. Like you think about it for the past, I don't know, 6,000 years, there haven't been any dating apps and there haven't been any social medias to speak of, right? Okay. Like nothing special has gone on in regards to technology. Mm-hmm. And now all these young people who are dating, or trying to date, or even married, they all have to reckon with this new, some would call it an evil, some would call it a help, some would call it whatever. You know, Mm -hmm. Instagram, Tinder, Bumble, they're not all in the same category of social media, but the reality is they're all apps on your phone that you can use to connect with people. Mm -hmm. Some are meant to help you get connected with people, and some are meant to help you stay connected with people. Yep. So let's focus on dating apps for a minute here first. I'll start off by saying that I think they're dumb, Um, but then we'll get into more of that. That's a pretty blanket statement. I will say that me saying that they're dumb overall is... Um, kind of contrary to a debate that Abigail, Anna, and I were doing a week oh, ago. Because okay. Anna was arguing that they were dumb a week ago, and Abigail and I were arguing it that they weren't. And I think that they y- can you be You changed helpful. really quickly. I might have to go back but on my word with the debate we had last week a little bit. Because, I don't know, dating apps are... Okay, mm. here's the thing. It's a, it's a tool. A tool can be used for good or bad. Yeah. Yes, I don't think yeah. a dating app is inherently dumb or not, because... I'm sure there are some like good wholesome couples that have, that have met on dating. Well, I know apps. a few. I think, yeah, yeah. Someone at our church didn't they meet on I like Christian met, mingle or something? Yeah, I think they met on the Christian Tinder type thing. It's Christian mingle, well, I think, um, or one of them. Which those terms seem like they don't go together. <laughs> but apparently, they do. Christian Tinder. <laughs> app. Dating apps, you definitely get what you put into it. Exactly. You get out yeah. of it what you put into it. Yeah. And because my aunt and uncle met on a dating app, and they have two adorable children. But there's some controversy. They're not in danger of divorce or anything, but I think that they had there was a there's a chance for them to be happier. I just think maybe a dating app wasn't the best place to meet someone in that instance. Um Yeah. They ended up getting married because they had my cousin before marriage. Ooh. But uh well not only because of that. But you in that case you definitely put you definitely get out what you put into it mm-hmm. and your intentions and stuff right. like with yeah. christian mingle i'm sure those people 
mm-hmm. meant to meet someone who was godly to marry and to do life with, but yeah. someone who's just looking for a quick hookup. Like, yeah, yeah it's that is a more problem. effective, I think, in the hookup. Like, oh, it well, yeah, yeah, it's for sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah. people that are out there, like, oh yeah, it's one night. Like, they're yeah. willing to be with anyone. I called it a boyfriend auction before. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh. but I right? called it that oh, today. I'll yeah. bet on you. Yeah. <laughs> I also know a couple who are getting married and they met on a dating app, uh, dating app during quarantine, even like during COVID. Okay. And they're getting married right now, and they're not Christian, but they're like a really strong couple. They live together. Right. Um, like they don't really have any big relationship flaws because of that. Yeah. So. Hmm. Well, I know I know secular couples who have met on dating apps, but I will say the thing about the couple that I'm thinking of right now is that they met on, I think it's um, Bumble or something like that. It's basically the dating app where men just allow themselves to be swiped at by women, <laughs> but they can't really make the first move. Like, it leaves it up to the woman That's to make weird. the first move, which I don't really agree with the premise of, like, I don't think it really matters who makes the first move at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I don't care. But it is easier... When a man can't make the first move, because gen- men are generally more aggressive, especially well, online. Well, yeah, you know what's like that sounds so weird almost. Just when you think about it, like oh, the woman makes the first move. Because when mm-hmm. you think about it, that seems less aggressive. Right. Like when a woman could be just as dangerous and aggressive as some. Yeah, that's other why male. I've said with the prevalence, I yes, don't agree with but it. But I. To me, it's sort of sad that the classic, like, the man goes after the woman and pursues her. Like, that's sort of been lost in our hookup culture, and it's sad to me. I don't, know if it's, I don't know if it's been entirely lost in hookup culture. Well, I think I it's just know. changed okay. form so that it can't be recognized anymore. Yeah. Well, like a because men pure, still go after well, yeah, women it's a lot. Well, like a pure pursuit. That, yeah. that like type is definitely like a, a pursuit yeah. for marriage Cat instead of... could technically you know. be right. pursuing the woman. Yeah. Right. But, I, yeah. Right. but like leading the relationship, like that's yeah. the exactly, role yeah. is to kind of make the decisions and... Mm-hmm. You well, you know, the men do the hard work of hunting out the women and then... um. Pardon my language, ladies, but the oh, victims no. become the leaders as soon as you get into a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the man hunts out the woman and he goes and uses a bunch of stupid flirt lines and then the woman's his boss. Okay. It does depend. Like I think there yeah, are like some relationships where the women are just more dominant and if that works for them, that like works for them. See, like I'm the not thing is with this yes. this yeah, conversation no, here, it's very easy to like make a generalization. It is. Right. Yeah. It really is what works like, for each relationship. I, yeah. I think that's going to be a theme we'll touch on more later. That mm-hmm. it really depends on the couples and the yeah. people involved in relationships as to how they're going to turn out. Exactly. But yeah. I will ask this question: Overall, do you think that dating apps are beneficial or not so beneficial for relationships? Because on the one hand, you have a lot of relationships that start with them, and on the yeah. other, you hear all these stories of people who cheated on their partners yeah. by yeah. going I on. I don't them. think you can <laughs> answer that generally. Right. Like, I yeah, it's it's too general because like I know that. It, again, it go, it goes back to it being just a tool for people to use for either good or evil. Right. So I mean, like, it's certainly easier than going out and meeting people. Yeah. So sure, it makes getting I mean, in a relationship easier. Yeah. It, it what well, the thing is is if you got rid of all dating apps, it wouldn't make meeting people impossible. Yeah. You could still meet people. Well, we like, all know that you men know will find for hundreds of years evil. people managed without dating apps, so it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's they managed. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, we're here right now, so that's clear. Um. <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, it really fits our world of technology, though, right? It does. It does. Yeah. I think, in general, though, the overdependence on technology is just not good right. for mm-hmm. us. Yeah, you're right. And another thing is, like, I, I just I cringe whenever it's, like, I see this, I don't know, once in a while, this couple will pop up, and they're like, I'm an Instagram influencer. No, red flag. I Go post away. shots mm-hmm. of myself flag, on the beach, flag, and my boyfriend flag, is flag, totally fine flag, with it. Red flag. Uh, red flag, like, red flag. Uh, really, really, that's red fine. Flag. With Your him? boyfriend's only fine with that because he wants to be able to he's, look at other he's, girls' he's Instagrams. Right. Well, I saw this yeah. TikTok. He's a soy once. boy. I actually <laughs> Get rid did. Of him. I actually did see this TikTok once. It was like this guy was going up to random women and asking, like, "Hey, do you have OnlyFans?" And the lady was like, "Yes, yes, I do." Mm. And she was like, and then he was like. Okay, well, do you let your boyfriend use OnlyFans? And she was like, uh, no, no <laughs> way he's using OnlyFans. And then she, the back, I was like, but you have OnlyFans and you post yeah, on your OnlyFans, mm-hmm. right? And she was like, uh, mm, uh, uh. She, not she, allowed, didn't, she didn't know what to say. not allowed to look at her OnlyFans? Mm. 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 She's her, he, he, he's her only subscriber. I have to. Oh, good point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, <laughs> she makes him pay for that money. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, get your mouth no. and your mind out of the gutter. Well, that's the difference. Well, like, she thinks honestly, it's a job. She thinks it's because she's making money, so it's right. fine. 
Well, you know, the boys are obviously, well, some boys are fine with it, not so much because they want their girlfriends on OnlyFans, but because their girlfriends make money. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, um, also, they don't want to tell them to not do it, because otherwise they'll get mad Because they're sexist, them. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I don't care if some girl like that gets mad at me for just trying to do what's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of lost on well, culture. What does that tell about the man's standards, though? Yeah, exactly. True. Yeah. Yeah. What does true. he want her for? Like, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, you would have to know she was on OnlyFans. Probably, right? Probably. Well, mm-hmm. Not always. Not always. Not always. I will say that. Well, if she's admitting it to a stranger, that's true. Yeah. Find out. If she's admitting it to a stranger, then her boyfriend probably knows. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. You shouldn't and be okay with that because yeah. that projects so immodesty, which is not good. And really, her reasons for being on OnlyFans, whether it's money or whatever, it's still going to show through in mm. their relationship. Yeah. So what does that also say about her boyfriend? Like mm. his yeah. character and like what That's he's true. wanting Yeah, what does he want out of the relationship? Right, it's a yeah. two-way street for sure. But I find it rather scary that at this point, boyfriends are less of actual romantic significant others, mm-hmm. and they're more of just toys, and oh, okay. I've been wanting to talk okay. about this all day, okay. but let's talk about the boy best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. You know the stereotype, right? The boy yeah, best friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, for those of you who may not know what a boy best friend is, this is not just some boy that you like platonically and you go out for ice cream once in a while mm-hmm. and you like to talk to him about politics, whatever. This, according to Urban Dictionary, um, the dictionary definition from Urban Dictionary, which I don't really me- recommend as a dictionary no. ordinarily, but Merriam-Webster's well, think, doesn't have something like this. I think for like modern terms, like for boy cultural best friend, terms, I yeah. think it's pretty reliable. Um, I'm going to read um, the definition and I'm going to... Give special attention to what I find to be a little bit weird. Okay. Uh, protect and cuddle you like a little sister. Makes you laugh, smile, and you can be yourself around. Fine. No matter what you did, he'd text you in the morning and night. That's a little creepy. Can talk to you about anything and everything. I mean, fair enough. Whatever. First one there if you need a shoulder to cry on. Well, I would, I would think that would be your mom, your dad, or your yeah. boyfriend, right? Knows when things aren't right, even when you say I'm fine. Okay, look, well, I, I mean, do this to people all the time. I know when they're not right. Yeah, it's that's, not anything that's just special. A thing, yeah. Gives you great advice. Sure, well, fine. I mean, the first to call uh, if something bad or amazing happens. Wouldn't that be your boyfriend or your dad? Like, if you get a flat mm-hmm. tire, you want your dad yeah. to come. Unless your boyfriend's out of town, your boy best friend is only there. He's not afraid to tell you when you're with the wrong guy. Ooh. So this is implying Wait, that he's not the guy. Okay. He's just it, oh, it's implying that she's also this in a relationship sounds, as well. This sounds a lot more like a brother or a cousin to me. Like that's yeah. almost the relationship I have with my guy cousins. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like if they're not family, why don't you just <clears throat> date them? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you have that relationship with someone, if they're treating you that well, just date them. Like exactly. I mean, yeah. yeah for real. A good one, if they'll tell them. you when your boyfriend is being a jerk. Just get a new boyfriend, I, well, I man. I think that's also a sign that they're trying to like get her out of the relationship so they can free her up yeah. for well, them. Well, isn't that like the storyline of every Yeah, show? every, every like, stereotypical. Literally. Um, um, actually, actually, I have a gay best boyfriend. <laughs> I, and he's yeah. not in um, yet. Actually, oh. no. <laughs> no, he's definitely 100% gay. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, the gay... <laughs> best friend is also an interesting <laughs> idea both i don't i don't think he's actually gay i'm can, I'm, I'm just gonna put that out yeah. there right gay guys gonna at girls sleepovers that. is something that's that makes so me creepy so uncomfortable. oh that's weird <laughs> like, like oh no okay fine you're gay, gay guys that wouldn't you want to go to the male like, okay, if you want to talk about guys with other girls like you can do that but you still have you're still a male physically. Yeah, like, right? how are mothers letting, like, boys into their daughter's right? houses? Why are you assuming the they that, have oh, mothers? I'm <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that's Whoa. true. Maybe that's the problem. I think or that's fathers. the problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's Fatherless f- behavior. Yeah, it's the family dynamic, though. Like, with the exactly. boy best friend, you basically just dis- described a brother. Like, yeah. That's a brother. what my brothers would do for me, basically. Mm-hmm. Well, right? I will say, I don't cuddle with my sister. Well, yes. Okay. I don't. Well, you have a different, di- you have a oh. brother. different brother sister dynamic, though. Well, do you cuddle with your sister? Will? No. Oh, I see? don't. It's it's a different dynamic. Yeah, I don't cuddle with my brothers. Like I'll hug them or like yeah, I hug Caleb will like sister. sit with me physically comfortable with them. Yes. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. physically yeah. comfortable yes. sitting next yeah. to my cousins or like you know hugging them and stuff like yeah. that. But I wouldn't be with other guys who I'm friends yeah. with because right. but like it's all other guys are potential like exactly yeah not that I'm. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. In that world, like, that's a potential person you could get married to. Exactly. So you need to not treat them like a sibling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you know, treat unless them. you're in Alabama, yeah. your brother is your brother. It's not your boyfriend. 
<laughs> but that does lead into the question, how should one handle relationships with members of the opposite sex when you're in a well, romance with someone? Like, is there really... I wonder if there's much of a difference between how you should treat them when you're single and when you have well, a boyfriend think, or girlfriend. I think there is a difference. I think there is a I big mean, difference. Speaking from my own perspective, I never really hung out with guys alone before I got in a relationship just generally. Mm-hmm. But especially now, it's not just because I don't trust the guys that I'm with, but it's just like out of respect for my boyfriend who doesn't want to yeah. be referred to by his name. He wants me to call him Blue Flame on this <laughs> Good old uh, blue yes, flame. A plug, a plug. So, like, it's not even that he's uncomfortable with that. I mean, he might be, but he hasn't told me that. It's just that I want him to know, listen, like, I'm putting up yeah. this boundary, like, as a respect to you, that yeah, I'm not going to hang out with other guys do. alone. It's like, there's, n- there's nothing wrong with having a friend of the opposite sex, but yeah. you shouldn't, especially when you're in a relationship with someone, you shouldn't, like, hang out with them one-on-one. Yeah. Yeah, I think you really have to meticulously guard yourself yeah. with that, mm-hmm. because... With, especially with, like, a boy best friend kind Mm -hmm. of thing. Like, I know some people have a boyfriend and then they have a guy friend, right? And they have to be meticulous with how they treat the guy friend. Exactly, There should be a huge difference between how you are with your boyfriend and with your guy friend. Yeah, you should be able to tell just by looking at them, (laughs) like, as a total stranger, which one they're a boy, like, they're dating and which one they're just friends with. Yeah. You should be able to tell. Or maybe the girl is walking in front of the two guys and they're holding hands behind her back. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) They're both secretly gay. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, I'm just, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a difference in how you treat someone when you're in a relationship. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying that like, overall, even if you're single and you're hanging out with someone of the other gender, you think about it, like if you're not romantically involved with them, you would probably treat them pretty much the same way you would when you have a boyfriend. Otherwise, you might as well just date them. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. That's true. I, I mean, also think you need to have that like, respect for your your boyfriend or girlfriend like especially for myself because yeah. i wouldn't want him to hang out with girls alone either like exactly even if yeah. they're like my yeah friends, it's a two-way street like, like i like trust abby and i trust my boyfriend but not that i would hang out with him alone <laughs> no, <laughs> thank you. but like still Rivalry. i would not that yeah. would just make me uncomfortable you know what i mean me too so I want that would make me uncomfortable for me too that's right. why mm-hmm. i would say no i'm not gonna do that because i don't want you to do that either yeah mm-hmm. i agree there is the whole thing like men and women can't be friends though I, I think that's think I think that's taking it too far. The I other think way, that's though. a bunch yeah. of BS, man. I don't like that yeah. because at yeah. the end of the day, I mean, we're brothers and sisters in Christ mm-hmm. for a reason, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you're not going to raise a family with everyone at your church. Of course um, not. I hope. <laughs> but <laughs> you're I mean, still brothers and sisters church, in Christ. Maybe. Like you have that's the fellowship, church. right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So you can't just be cold to everyone, but. But like, yeah, you don't you don't treat every woman you meet as like the best person. And in I, your I life. will yeah. say that the thing about um, if you don't ever let your romantic partner have friends of the other gender, I've seen the TikToks where That's it's interesting. like. What? You have to kind of have some trust there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, I've seen the TikTok. It's like, I don't let my boyfriend look at other girls on TV. I'm just that jealous. And it's like, well. Okay, but if Girl, you're if you're the you only like, if you're the yes. only girl he ever hangs yeah. out with, he's gonna get sick of you really fast yeah. and go cheat, man. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, so because you want them to have some comparison too. Sure. I also feel like you want them to see the negative, like the worst girls. If you don't let them see anyone, it's just gonna be you, and <laughs> yeah, they're not you're, gonna you're, see like they're gonna be like the this only is all perception I have. of girls. Oh he my has. gosh! Oh my right. gosh! Like, this girl! Oh my gosh! I can't take her no more. Well, I'm out of here. I think it's really unfair to be like, no, you can't have basically what you're saying, but also. I know we're supposed to be saving Jesus and re- the church oh for later, but how are people supposed to minister to the world if you won't exactly, let them look at yeah. another woman? Like, right. don't lust after her, but sure. you have to love them like Jesus. Mm-hmm. And if that's the standard for how we're living, then loving someone like Jesus means that you love everybody like well, Jesus, exactly. no and matter the thing their too gender. Is if you won't let them love them like Jesus, because that's apparently a sign of romance, that makes Jesus... I don't yeah, Jesus love people. Minute. Like that's <laughs> just not how it goes. I don't remember Jesus romancing anybody. No. Like his love dude. is like dude. a brotherly love. It's a fatherly love. Mm-hmm. Right. And with that that's what kind of got me I suppose interested when I heard like the comparison between the boy best friend when you said it was like a brother cuz in my head I'm thinking okay well true you don't want your boy best friend to be everything that the urban dictionary listed yeah. but at the same time there's some kind of comparison that you could make between a brother or a cousin and a boyfriend like you're not going 
again, unless you're in Alabama, you're not going to date your brother or your cousin. <clears throat> Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to be completely uncomfortable around them either. Like, you can have friends. But the reality is that it depends on the couple. You need to lay out your own boundaries. And mm -hmm. if you're not being unreasonable, then there's really no standard I can hold you to. Also, I feel like having a boy or girl best friend, if you're not in a relationship, is also really different. Like, I, my mom had her best friend growing up since she was, like, five was a boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they were, like, brother and sister. And... I mean, my first thought is like, no, you wouldn't want to be, you wouldn't want your best friend to be the same gender as the person you're dating. But I think it really is possible. Like if they are your best friend in the whole wide world, if they're the first person you call, like throughout your whole I mean, childhood, it's, it's still possible to have healthy yeah. relationships. Yeah. You're, it's just that your intention with that best friendship needs to be like very clear yeah. to you and yeah. the person right. you're well, best friends with. There definitely well, needs to be very clear dating. boundaries set as well. The right. difference between having a best friend of the opposite gender when you're single and when you're taken is that it's really just it comes down to consequences because at the end yeah. of the day the yes. attitude should be basically the same like whatever's inappropriate for you to do when you're single is also going to be inappropriate for yeah. you to do yeah. when you're in right. a romantic relationship mm -hmm. the difference is the consequences are different if you do something bad when you're single well just date the person like whatever okay yeah. mm -hmm. uh, when you're not single you have another person to worry about mm -hmm. you don't want to hurt their feelings and then that person is going to get mad at whoever you did whatever else with the boy yeah. best friend, girl best friend, whatever. That's really not a difference of how you treat people in my mind. It's a difference of consequences. Yeah. That's a good point. I don't have to worry about having a boy best friend, though, and interference with a relationship because I am single. Relatable. As are three quarters <laughs> of us. Mm. There's only one I'll outcast just, here. I'll just sit back and listen to this part. <laughs> one yeah, of these things is not like here. the other. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, how does the world treat single people? Like, what are we, as single people, told? Not necessarily by our churches, because that's going to give us a different perspective. But from the world in general, whenever you read the news or read, I don't know, if you ever read, know. like, psychological articles about the human brain, whatever, and singleness and all that, I don't know. It, it's really hard to say stuff about this because it's so broad and inconsistent what people say about it. Because I see so many people saying so many different things about it, like "Don't get married; it's a waste of time. You're gonna waste your life." I've seen yeah, other people. You're gonna people, end up at 35 with a and, divorce where your wife gets your house. Yeah, and your I've kids. heard people say that. I've heard other people say, "Oh, you should get married, but you should like marry out of the country. You shouldn't go for a woman in America." I've heard people say that. You're American. Yeah, I've oh, heard. I've, what's the benefit of that? They're just saying they're like people saying that there are no traditional women in America anymore, and that the only oh. traditional women you can find are well, in places are, like they're Europe. They are. They're just quiet. They're well, not yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the problem I have with that. I don't you agree have to with them. Look for them. Yeah, I don't yeah. agree with them. I'm just saying that's what I've seen well, online. It's not like traditional women in other cultures are going to be that helpful to you because you're coming from a culture that isn't theirs. Yeah. So like traditional women in another culture, it's just going to be kind of weird. Yeah, who says they like, want American men? Exactly. Like, yeah. I want an American man. No, I want a French man. Not no. Thank you, but uh, France. I can see that, Isaac. Hmm? I can <laughs> see that. <laughs> yeah. Isaac, Isaac wants a Frenchman confirmed. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe to sell me cologne or something. Oh my know. goodness! Ooh, wait, actually, uh, Will made a really good point earlier that the world—it's either like a girl boss kind of thing if mm -hmm. you aren't dating or married. He said this when we weren't recording. Yes, of yeah, yeah, the best. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> best we actually have our most <laughs> interesting conversations off rec record. So yeah, y'all you know, are just getting sorry, second yeah. cut. You yes. you get the worst of what mm -hmm. we say. <laughs> no, we plan it out better than that. But yeah, anyway, okay. go on, Abby. Uh, so it's true. Like people are praised for not being in a relationship, and people are praised for not having children. And as a female, like going after your dreams, your passions, mm -hmm. your job. But you're also in some circles shamed for not having a boyfriend or not wanting yeah, a boyfriend. Right. Like there's something wrong with you or you're missing out on something. And that's actually something I had to get over. Like I'm not missing out on something. I'm actually sorry to bring God into this again. But no, God's good. 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 Yes. good. Yeah, please bring yeah, God into this. I love having him here. He's been a big part <laughs> of me being like okay <laughs> being single. And I know that's like you're only sixteen. Well, yes, I'm only 16, but I still feel the pressures of society to have my life. Yeah, it's out. you're still developing like your yes. brain is still developing. Well, it's also exactly. like, cause right. like it's a, a well, lot of 
it, it's a big stereotype for like teenage high schoolers especially to get like girlfriends and boyfriends yeah. like, into relationships. Yeah. And it sometimes young. feel like you're missing out on something. Yeah. Well, right? That's also rarely like their lifelong relationship. Exactly. Too. Like yeah. it's yeah. very rare. It's just very rare for your first relationship to be your only one. I mean, it certainly happens. It happened with my brother. Really? He was, he was lucky. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. yeah, that was a fun story. It was. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting because you would think that you wouldn't feel so much pressure in the church to get married. And <laughs> it, it depends really on the it depends on the church. It I will does. say that. Yeah. But I saw this skit once. It was like when Asians don't have a girlfriend by 18, it's like, Okay, you got to get your piano done. You have to become a, a PhD by 18, and then it's eight, 18. Like, no dating until you're 18. It's like, as soon as you turn 18, why aren't you married? What's wrong with why you? Why aren't you married? But it <laughs> does, it seems like that in like churches sometimes because it's like, ah, look at this big church family. They homeschool all mm. of their 81 and a half children. Oh, no, thank you. The parents <laughs> got married at 13 in South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's just it's not necessarily outright said in a lot of churches but you walk into a church i'm thinking of churches in south carolina in the south by the way um <laughs> but it's just like you walk into the church and you see like half the congregation you no know, three quarters is made up of the pastor's kids yeah and you're just like uh okay i feel a little inadequate here as a single person and you know there's just sometimes it does feel like single people are supposed to be doing more with their life, bringing more good little Christians into the world, I guess. Well, yeah. if you see, like, a big family with a bunch of kids, you know, if you see someone who's married, has a bunch of kids, like, they're a happy family. Like, you look at them and think they're successful. Like, yeah. that is almost immediate. You're going to think, oh, wow, look, they've, you know, completed their life. They have this healthy yes. relationship and yeah. family. Like, that's a sign of success. No, the parents are going well, to have uh, an under-18-year-old in the house until they're dead to take care <laughs> of them. Like, <laughs> yeah. what more do they want? Really? Well, yeah. like, but that's, it's sad because that's, like, really in the church. Because mm -hmm. people now, they see children as a burden. Right. And that is another no. sad thing. Yes. It's Although so I don't sad. want those people having kids. Well, I don't want well yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like, true. True. If you see kids as like these disgusting little monsters who leech off of little you. Rodents. Actually, you know what? I think it's better I if you don't have kids. I don't want you raising more yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Leave, yeah. Let, let me take care of that. Like someone who actually wants kids, I'll, I'll take care of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Don't, don't bother yourself with also, that. Also, like, like the whole trans people, academic or ep epidemic. Epidem in the like United States, it's like, oh, that's a huge problem. But also, they're not having kids, so they're all gonna die off, and two generations will be fine. <laughs> that's a good point. Like that's yeah. my thought. I'm like you know, what? my kids are we gonna just be gotta fine because yeah. they're not yeah. gonna have to deal with that because mm -hmm. none of the gay people are having plus, kids either. Also, Christians tend to have lots of kids. So. Exactly. Like, Catholic families are all huge. Or know? Mennonite, Amish, any of those. Yeah. Type no, even some like or Protestant like, uh, families. I mean, yeah, I know, but that's like you, the everybody knows like the yeah, white van family, where it's like the yeah, oh yeah, the family biggest, with the white van and they have like twelve kids in life is to yes. buy a big white van that kidnappers would use. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah. People who own white vans, they're either like a like a big homeschool family or oh, right. a kidnapper. It's like, Dad, how much money did you spend on this van again? Well, let's just say if I didn't have kids, I would have bought a Lamborghini with this money. <laughs> but oh instead, God. I had to buy a 120 seat bus for my family <laughs> and one kid still has to ride on the roof yeah <laughs> yeah but going back to the world's perspective you do feel the pressure and you feel like you're missing out because th everywhere you go it's pushing it like books media mm -hmm. movies it's glorified a little bit yeah everywhere it, it also singleness is glorified yes yeah, but like, well it depends. A, lot of, it depends. a lot of the things that you hear nowadays on the internet is like oh if your boyfriend messes up like he makes some mistake or he does this or he tries to tell you what to wear break it up with them immediately well, no I mean, chance i mean like obviously well, you should have standards if someone treats doesn't treat you right you got to get them out of yeah. your life but like, well, like you should give second chances the thing is exactly. the thing is if you're a man if you're a single man in america you're supposed to be gay, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you're a single woman in America, you're supposed to stay single and be a girl boss. Yeah. Right. It just, I'm not, you know, that's not reality. That, that's not reflective of most of reality because there are a lot of straight men mm -hmm. and women in America. There's just not uh, there's, a lot of mercy But for culturally, men, it yeah, feels like that true. sometimes. Yeah, well, like right now I'm trying to figure out my life and I mm -hmm. want to go into the business world as an architect, right? But I also want to be married and have a kid by 26. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out that dynamic and I might just have a family and then go to school later in life because I do prioritize a family a right. little more than architecture. And I could I could still be involved in design while I'm raising yeah. a family, right? Yeah, like, but it's it's not an either or situation. You can yes. raise a family and still work. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't totally want to put my future children into the system of no. public education, oh, yeah. but there are I there are alternatives. <laughs> I think being mm-hmm. a stay-at-home mom is very important. Yes. I want to be a stay-at-home mom. And, like, it depends on where they go to school because if you put them in a Christian private school or, like, mm-hmm. someplace like where Rivendell is where it's yeah. all Christian or Catholic, like, I think yeah. that's good. Even at, like, a young age, like, they probably should be spending a lot more time with their parents. But I don't think both parents should be working, at least in the mm-hmm. first few years of their child's life yes. because, like, yeah. you don't want to put them in the daycare system. No. No, no. I yeah, I want to be a stay at home mom. I think it's such it, an yeah, honor to be able to provide that for your child. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Well, and this goes into something that Will has wanted to talk about for a long, long time now. <laughs> what? <laughs> he looks scared. He wants to talk about the uh, role of the man in the family. But William, oh. I'm sorry, bro. What? You have to wait until the second segment when we get into what the <laughs> church it. looks like and all that. <laughs> So just hold on. I'm looking forward to that too now. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Wait, that's There's really a lot of fun stuff happening in the second segment. It's, yeah. funny. it's like that's how things have been for thousands of years. Yeah. How is it a controversial statement? Don't change what works. Nowadays. Well, like hey, even man. in the church though, right? Like it's yeah. sort of controversial because anyway, we'll save it for yeah. the yeah. second yeah. segment. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Getting ahead of ourselves. So what were we just talking well, about? Well, there's one more thing that we single want to demolish birth. in this first segment and it's standards that single yeah, people right. might have for other people well, or, you know. Never mind. So, what do you think about standards? <laughs> like, where's the point where standards are just a bunch of laws that you have to follow? And where's the point where, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of seeing all these videos of girls being like, my boyfriend told me today I couldn't wear a bikini to the pool. I'm mm-hmm. going to break up with him. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I think there needs to be some submitted, submittance? Sub- Sub- submittance. Submittance. Yeah, submission. Yes, Submissiveness. That, In that situation, because I'm not... For like, oh, your husband owns your body, but well, like mutual respect. Yeah, you do. Like it's, I don't know. Like it's a, it's a. What is it? Your body's a temple. Yes. Yeah. Like you need to kind of keep that. It's it's for you and your husband. Like you really can't be showing that off to other exactly, people, and yeah. you have to respect yourself and your husband yeah. by like mm-hmm. keeping that and in private. It would be a problem. Wow. It would be a problem. <laughs> problem. Problem. <laughs> it would be a problem <laughs> if. He asked me to not wear a bikini, but then he goes around shirtless and in a speedo. Yeah, I mean, That's yeah. Good. I mean, yeah, double standards is there. One thing, yeah. But so it, it's yeah, a mutual if gonna, respect. If you're gonna have a standard for yes. um your significant other, you have to hold the same standard to right. yourself. Yes. But That's not That's what's happening. That's something. In a lot of oh. That's what I see a lot on the internet. They'll yeah. be like, yeah, you like it. I see it on both sides too. Like they'll some women will tell the men they can't look at any other girls, but like they'll you know look at other yeah, guys like, like, yeah. and then so, some guys the will say oh <laughs> yeah. m- like to their like girlfriend or whatever you have to wear this this and this but then they'll just wear whatever right go outside naked yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's hope not <laughs> well i think it's also a question of low when are your standards too low and desperate and when are your mm-hmm. standards too high and unrealistic yeah mm-hmm. my two cents is for physical standards like that's kind of BS. Like, you can have preferences for, like, oh, I want my boyfriend to be tall. I want to be blonde. I want yeah, this. Yeah, but you he's sh- you not. Should, but six, you should prioritize yes, those things. Those standards, like, it's okay to have a preference, but those standards should not determine who you date at all. Yeah. That's why I think, like, you should definitely like, have standards oh, for, oh, oh you you're a Oh, you're a great guy with a great personality. You love the Lord. You have a great job, but you're yeah. 5'11". Sorry. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. You're like, talking about yourself, stuff Will. Is all important, I know. But, <laughs> yeah. I would say I'm definitely learning because... I can't honestly say that looks don't matter to me because they do in a way, but style matters more to me yeah. actually than looks like, because it shows you care about yourself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I also have come to realize how you can, because at first I was like, how can someone who is beautiful and gorgeous in every way end up with like somebody who's not in their league right <laughs> and i think those are stupid too yes yeah. but oh, there really there are no leagues it's yeah. stupid but i was like how can you fall in love with someone for their personality kind of thing but now i know that sounds like really shallow Wait. but i was younger and i didn't really think oh, about it oh yeah so recently i've been really thinking about that i'm like i can totally see that and personality has definitely become more important but also you know loving jesus and mm-hmm. i mean that's being kind willing of to I guess. go out and evangelize with me and push me to be a better me you know yeah right right and we'll talk about 
how spouse, yeah. spouses are supposed to help each other become better me's in the second <laughs> segment. I have stuff to say about that. Don't worry. Yes. Yes. But I think that's where we'll call it for the first segment. We want to save plenty of time to talk about all oh, the interesting course, yeah. little issues we have going on in the second segment. So we'll be right back after this stupid music. All right. As the expert in relationships uh, for this episode, um, they made me introduce this segment. What makes so, you an expert? Please tell I'm us. I'm the only one who has managed to make my way into a oh. relationship. Oh, no. she's calling us oh, losers. Way, way to hit me where it hurts, man. <laughs> we shouldn't take that. <laughs> no, um, I, I don't want to do this anymore, bro. <laughs> so this segment is going to be about relationships in the church. Correct. All right. You remembered correctly. Good job. Yeah. And, you know, let's start out. Since I took Will's thunder away from him earlier, when he you was did? just starting to get started on his sexist rant, let's yeah, talk yeah. about <laughs> the dynamic within marriage in the church. All right, guys. Ooh, let's hear it. And specifically, should the man be the head of the household? Women belong in the kitchen. <laughs> Go make me a sandwich. <laughs> Is that so? Okay, okay. Oh, I'm not Abby <laughs> just death glare. Oh, wait, 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 no, oh, no, no, please. <laughs> you know, glare. Abigail has this thing we were talking about. This is called the death glare. And once yeah, in a yeah. while, she'll do it to me. Uh, usually she's trying not to smile like, well, she does it like right now. <laughs> but she will death glare me. <laughs> and Will just got death glared. De I said the same thing earlier and she was holding back a laugh that time. Yeah, well, she still is. Well, oh, okay. Well, I'm not being serious this I'm time. I'm laughing either. at your insolence. Right, insol oh, <laughs> wait, that's a big word. Oh, I wouldn't take that. I don't. You? I don't know if I trust. I don't know if I'm comfortable with this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you belong back in school then. Oh no! Something to tell us. I just wow. graduated. No, but anyway, William. <laughs> okay. Um, rant. <laughs> Do I need to hold? I was. I, w <laughs> 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 like I, I may or may not be it. fearing for my life right now, so I may be a little bit. Uh, no, okay, I'm joking. Well, okay, when I said that, I was joking. <laughs> I, I don't want women to be slaves in the kitchen, obviously. Darn it, I thought but, someone agreed with me for once. Sorry, bro, you're, you're on your own. And <laughs> she just stepped at him again. <laughs> Dang, I wish we were, I know I wish we were I one of those joking. podcasts <laughs> that had like a film set up too. Oh, I know, that, that would be cool, oh, yeah. That would make for such good a bit. But anyway, moving on. I am quite the hyper traditionalist in that i think the man should go out and be the breadwinner and that the wim woman should stay home and take care of the kids and you do all the housework that's not to say that is not to say that a woman can't work at any point in her life but i think it is very important for the woman to stay home and you know take care of the kids raise them at least at a young age at the most important and then most hand vital them off part. to the government yeah, <laughs> just once no, they turn not 13, they're, they're, they're not cute them. anymore, so you just got to give them away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking as a very uncute 13 year old, I can. Ooh. Yeah. You're 13? No, I'm not. Oh. No, when I was 13. Oh, oh my bad. <laughs> yeah, I, gra I, I, gra you said you just graduated. I, I graduated at 13, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> nice job. No, no, I'm 18. I think for those who are unaware. I think you're probably mostly correct. Like, it's just. It's almost like sandpaper going through our brains right now to hear like women should do the housework. That's just you think that you're going to get shot for that or whatever. No, um, I think, but I do agree. And yeah, I don't kind of 100%. I don't necessarily think that women have to be the ones doing the housework like men can do housework. Well, but the, the idea is that the women should I guess be housework is a broad term, right? Yeah. Homemakers. Yeah, homemakers. I mean, look, if I see a man vacuuming, I am <laughs> going to I, I'm going to start yelling at him. What did, what did she do to you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what are you on? What's wrong with you? So you're saying more like a partnership? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I would agree Obviously with that. it should be like something they agree with. Like it's yes. not just the husband is like, here, this is your job. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, the woman has to want to mm -hmm. right. do that role. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done in a marriage and they each got to take on different parts. Yeah. And I think it is the best place for the man to go out and make the money, do the hard work. Well, not to say that being a stay at home mom isn't hard, but like... <laughs> Make the cold Provided. hard cash. Yeah, yeah, be the provider, and she's going to stay home and take care of the kids. I have heard of some relationships where they sort of invert that, which... Yeah, so have I. I I'm, mean, it depends on the couple. It, it like, depends well, on the couple. If it yeah, works, it's, it works. Yeah, I think it. the couple has to decide what works well, the for thing them is, best. Because I, I know there are some women who are, like, really good at, you know, working. Right, and I know couples and, where, like, the women is just in a yeah. profession where they naturally make more than exactly. the man. Exactly. So yeah. it makes more financial sense that for them And, like, there are some, there are also some men out there who are more caring and, like, better with kids as well, right. so. Now, what were you but saying, I, 
That is one of the leading causes of divorce the is the woman making more than the men. The really? Man, and so that she leaves makes sense. Really? As soon as the, like, it's not, it's most of the divorce is like 40% or something. Oh, wow. That the woman starts to make more than her husband and she leaves him. She, oh, well. Hmm. Okay, well, that coming at from <laughs> a that's that's that, perspective. Wait, that, yeah, that makes sense. That says that the woman didn't marry him for him to, like, yeah. help mm. him. As soon as she saw that she didn't need him anymore, she just left, mm. mm-hmm. which is, hmm. Sounds like the problem. Not part yeah. of the topic, but it's yeah. an interesting. Yeah. Thing. That, that is an interesting yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that statistic. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, I did find some Bible verses, but I forgot to pull them up. So talk for a minute while I search them up on my okay. phone. I would agree that because I want to be a stay at home mom mm. and I want to raise my children and keep the home. Right. But I also don't want to be limited to housework because I like vacuuming, but I don't like doing laundry. So if I have to do all the laundry all the time. Okay, actually, I'm the opposite. Mm. I like laundry and I hate oh, vacuuming. Really? <laughs> <laughs> We'd be great. See, yeah, don't, I don't like don't either, but I have to do both. And I just man up and deal with it. Yeah, well, it's uh. nice because, you know, I have three younger siblings, so they also get to slave away. Oh. But I think that, like, I'm down with the man making the money. Like, yeah. I just want to... Me personally, I want to work in architecture because it's a passion of mine. Because yeah. I love the design. I love all the aspects of it. So it's not even I want to work there for money. It's just I want to work there because it's a passion. Yeah. But I believe in seasons of life, right? Yeah. You have your moments where you will stay at home and then I can work after, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what you have to keep in mind for the long run of, okay, I'm going to let him work now and then once the children are grown up and out of the house then i can work too because yeah. it's what i love to do so Retire you early yes exactly, yeah so yeah. you really have yeah. to think so, long term yeah what what it is is that the cu- each couple is di- going to be different and mm-hmm. they need to like discuss it together and decide when they're planning their future w- how's it going to work out yeah like when right, is right. like the woman going to stay home when is she going to go out back into the you know workforce and start working <coughs> it's mm-hmm. it's something each couple needs to work out for themselves and you know, hopefully it'll work for them. As long as they have guide, God as their light, as their guiding light, yeah. I think it will work okay. out for them. Yeah, sure. and it's a mutual thing. You have to make sure you have the respect. You have to make sure you're both getting what you need. Yeah. Communication is key. Like, literally, all the problems that come up in, like, fictional books, it's like, please, just communicate. That's, yeah. that's why I can't love. stand dramas. Because yeah. all the drama like, comes from lack of communication. Right. Right. It's like... Get better at communicating. A lot of the times I hate like the main character sometimes because it's like you can see what's going on inside their head. You can see like what they're not telling people, and it's like, and they choose to not tell them. And it's like, tell people. I don't get you so get mad. Like I go reread books that I used to like, and I'm like, I can't stand this person. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Isaac, did you find the Bible verses? I did. I did. It says in First uh, Corinthians seven, uh, the husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband for the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband does likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body but the wife does Mm -hmm. so it is like a partnership type thing right Mm -hmm. um obviously like you know you use the age-old um illustration of you're in a car yeah right the man is driving but the wife is the one with the map that's one thing i will not back down on the man needs to be the spiritual leader of the household yes Mm -hmm. right like no matter what and I'm down with that. Like, I'm okay with that. Obviously, I still have influence in the household. Well, yeah. That's not to say that person. the wi- that's not to yes. say that she can't yeah. say yes. anything. She has to just sit in the corner and well, just stay quiet. Yeah, well, it says, I'm not sure exactly the biblical reference, but it says, like, the man is to treat his wife like Christ treats the church. Exactly. And, yeah. it's, and the wife is to treat the husband like the church treats exactly. Christ. I think it's the responsibility of the woman to make sure that she marries someone who's going to exactly yes. her you know religion so that that's, she doesn't have to worry about that's taking why control of it she should marry someone who that's why marrying somebody with the same values i think picking someone based on value is the most important yes. thing you can yes. consider yes. when yeah. considering yeah. a partner because like this, this um this does lead because like well I, I just want to get something out there real quick oh my gosh shut up you had your moment <laughs> wow. wow you had your moment, <laughs> <laughs> and, moment don't marry a man like will Oh, no. I'll yell at you. Wow. <laughs> no, I don't even yell at my male friends. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that, that, you're, y'all assuming that I have female friends based off of that. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> anyway, I forgot what I was going to say. Thanks. Ah, <laughs> bingo. Dang it. Wait, wait, wait. No, I remember. So, 
Ah, okay, you should. The most important thing to consider when considering somebody to marry is their values. Because, like, no matter what you marry them based off of personality, looks, like money, if you guys do not have the same values, you're going to go down a bad road. Right. Because that's, especially when it comes to raising kids, like, you guys are going to fight so much if your values are not aligned yeah. that it's just, you're just going to, it. that's why you'll you eventually sure you both lead to like divorce. Value kids also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Cannot stand, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, when you're getting married, you're supposed to be one person. Like, two lives are kind of intertwined. So you mm-hmm. have to agree on everything, and you have to make the decisions together. It's like, mm-hmm. you, just, you really have to be so in sync mm-hmm. that way. Well, yeah. and then Same. that's when Jesus, like, God comes into the picture, right? Because three is stronger than one and two, right? Exactly, yeah. And with holy spirit comes unity because if you're both listening to holy spirit and you're both god led then there's going to be a unity because you're doing what god's directing you to do and god isn't going to direct you to do two different things Mm -hmm. yeah well can i ask the stupid question no (laughs) you do not have my permission i'm just as much of a member of this podcast as you no no say what i want to no you're not allowed to Oh my gosh. I want to I'm almost going to cry. Okay, okay, fine. Fine, just thank you. once, though. Thank you, thank you. No, um, we were actually <laughs> okay, thinking... I'm joking. I, I'm not actually mad at Isaac. Oh, good, okay. I was worried. Drama. I don't I don't know why I yelled at you. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> that was really aggressive. I, I usually don't do that. <laughs> the people yeah. who know me are going to be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we were thinking about discussing whether you should date and marry people of other denominations or if Ooh. you're a Protestant, a Catholic. Which or if I you're guess a Catholic or Protestant. I would really consider Catholic Catholicism to be just another branch of Christianity at the yes, end of the day. It like, depends. Well, like, I've met. It some depends just as much as it does in the yeah, Protestant church. Like you does. have, you know, gay loving churches and you have good Orthodox churches, That's right? True. Yeah. But I think it goes back to values. As yeah. You're saying, because, again, I mean, at the end of the day, denominations is just a stupid word we've coined to settle disagreements it's like i disagree with you about baptism i think that we should drown babies you think we should drown adults. whoa okay oh buddy God. that was a, the, okay. Even, okay even by your well, standards wow. that was a little Main dark it was christians like at protestants and catholics i think is um the sacraments right, right. yeah the um not worship of saints but like the intercessory, yeah, saints. the prayer right, to saints, yeah. yeah, and is it the communion? Well, that's kind of a communion in the Catholic Church is different because it's like a whole. It is. It's also a lot also more traditional. Like yeah. the communion is in the thing. Like, like they I, I, like I it kind of represents Jesus. Yeah, to and Protestants and I think some Catholics think it is Jesus. Yeah, and uh-huh. I am really conflicted about that not gonna lie i've been to a couple I, adorations and I stuff agree. and i'm like i simply just don't agree um, with them yeah because <laughs> in my mind i'm like I, okay we're not saying anything about religions no disrespect um, yeah no disrespect like i respect that but i think I, for me personally i don't care what denomination you're from you just need to love jesus have holy spirit in your life listen to holy spirit and let me prophesy because i'm not giving up my prophetic gift for someone because that's who god made me to be I don't know how you all feel about prophetic ministry or anything, but if the person is asking you to sacrifice a God-given gift or a God-given talent in a big way, and they're asking you to just totally cut that off, then I think that's a red flag because Mm -hmm. they're not appreciating who God made you to be. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I would say it really doesn't depend as much on the denomination as it does the people because... Especially the other person themselves. I refuse to marry a Methodist. Like... That's that's kind of dumb. Yeah. Um, like there's, you know, different intensities of a religion. Well, yeah. Right? At the end of the day, if, if the, I'm not talking about like different denominations in terms of the modern like Lutheran Church or whatever it is, yeah. the one that just went crazy all in on LGBTQ yeah. stuff. I'm talking about ones like different churches that still affirm the Apostles' Creed. And, yeah, you know, exactly. The, the, the basics. As long as you're both affirming the basics, it really depends on the individual. Because you can have two people who are very headstrong and think they're right about everything. That's not going yeah. to work out very well. Or you can have two people who can give a little bit Mm -hmm. and can realize that they might not be right on everything. And at the end of the day, as long as you both have the same ideas about raising children, you'll probably be Mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, some disagreement sometimes makes a marriage or relationship better. Yeah. I think sometimes because then you're kind of 
forced to think through your ideas all the way. Yeah, instead of just blindly going through your life with them. Right, and not that you need to argue about it, but it forces you to come up with, like, reasons. Like, oh, this is why I believe this. And then you really have to... Yeah. Like it no, makes you stronger in what ch- you it believe. It challenges too. your belief. Yeah, it yeah. challenges yeah. and yeah. Another thing too is like, I'm not so sure that, in terms of day to day life, denominations and different disagreements are really the most important thing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Think, think not. about it this way, right? Well, if yeah. you have a bookworm who is, I don't know, a Southern Baptist, okay, mm-hmm. and then you have a globe trekker who's also a Southern Baptist. The globe checker is also an adrenaline junkie, and they're gonna go want to go out parachuting and go around yeah. the world every other day. And the bookworm is just gonna be a homebody who's like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. They're both Southern yeah. Baptists, but at the other end of There's the spectrum, different values there too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You could have. Yeah. Like, all it, it comes all down to what you value. You could have someone who goes to Bethel and some kind of Catholic, I guess. And if they're both homebodies, you never know. That might work out better than the first scenario. Yeah, I heard a really good analogy where our main goal is to walk towards Jesus, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that is our objective. That's who we, who we are, and that's what we need to be doing. So you can be walking towards Jesus, and then you meet somebody, and you decide to walk towards Jesus a little closer to that person, right? Right. So then it gets to the point where you have to ask, okay, can I serve Jesus better with this person? Yeah, that's what it all exactly. comes down to. And so are you, they going in the same direction yes, as you, you as fast to, as you are? Yes, you have to seriously assess that because you're supposed to be equal, equally yoked. And you can't be equally yoked if he's on the other side of the continent in terms of beliefs, exactly, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you have to be walking oh, towards cool Jesus either. together and really question, okay, is this person bringing out the best in me? And is this person going to help me follow Jesus in a deeper way? Right. And are they mm. going to be a benefit to my relationship with Jesus? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then that's when you get married if the answer is yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw another thing where it was like a triangle. And like at the two bottom points, you have you and your other person, right? And the closer you get to that person, the top point is God. And like the closer you get together, you should be cl- getting closer to God. And if you're not yeah, getting so closer together, you're not like headed. Yeah. But a lot yeah, of the time, you just of, stay like at the bottom and walk towards each yeah. other. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go that way. You want to go up <laughs> together. Yeah, you want to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, that. no, that makes sense. Yeah. But let's talk about single people in the church. Single people. Single people. Mm. I don't know. I like single people. Single people are fun. I'm quite fun. They're of more. Single they're people. more fun. <laughs> I don't like than, single people. Um, they're kind of cringe. People. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of cringe then. Yeah, well, I know. Th- some I people can cringe. have their whole personality centered around being single, right? Yeah. But that's true. It's also a, yeah, they glorify it or they're like so intent on not being single that yeah. it becomes an obsession. That's true. But yeah, cuz for me, I might have already said this, but Jesus was a big reason why I got over being single and I think he gave me this cuz in this season, I can't really handle a relationship right now. I don't know mm-hmm. about you all, but I am so busy with my school, with my family, with figuring out who I am as a human. I I don't have with my friends. I don't have any more energy to pour into right? yeah, a relationship. That's understandable. And so in this season, I don't feel like I need to be looking for someone, but God gave me an excitement to find someone like a treasure hunt almost, like mm-hmm. to discover that person that God has orchestrated this connection and this uh, relationship with. So I think that we don't need to be in a rush, but we also have to keep in mind what God's calling us to, you know? Especially yeah. if it's well, your goal in life to get married. I do like have I to know. play devil's advocate here, Abigail. Yeah. Oh, How okay. do you know that there's ever going to be a season where you will be I able don't. to? Or do you know that you're Ooh. called yes. to a lifetime of singleness? I could be. Yeah, you I'm don't. not sure. Personally, right now, I'm hoping I'm not because I like it's one of the deepest desires of my heart to have a family. Mm-hmm. I know people who are in their 40s right now who are single and they want a family. But mm-hmm. right now, I think it's a journey with Jesus. Just yeah, it's a step because right now I'm OK being single and waiting for the person. But maybe the next step is Jesus showing me, OK, I'm OK being single for the rest of my life and it just mm-hmm. being you and me, God. So it's really a step process and going deeper with God. It's always going deeper with God, right? Yep. Yeah. But yeah, because right now I'm not bashing anybody in my life at all, but I cannot 
I can't see myself with anybody right now, you know? Mm-hmm. And like I said, I literally don't have the energy. Like mm-hmm. currently I am slightly struggling to keep my life together as <laughs> is. Yeah. And you're doing great. Thank you. But adding another person to that mix is like yeah, insane. I understand that. Yeah, and then but you know, when the person comes, there are some people who will just say that you don't I'm still not there yet. And then miss out, right? Yes. Like that's yeah. a, at the end you of the day, that's what I'm arguing. Yeah. Yes, and I am alert because I want to. I want someone to do life with. I want someone who I go back. I can go back over this whole timeline and be like, we've had all these memories together. We've made all these plans together. We've lived life together. And I want somebody who I can be unified with Christ in, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. there's such that draw and such that appeal. So people say, marry your best friend. Yes. Because exactly. So I really. Like I was saying, marry your boy best friend. No. <laughs> I know if you get along that well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Get, like if yeah. he'll tell you with, you're with the wrong guy, get, okay, hitched. get out of that Just relationship, <laughs> marry him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's also, again, listening to what Holy Spirit is calling you to. Mm-hmm. Because this year, my word for the year when I asked um, Holy Spirit was intimacy. Not intimacy with somebody, intimacy with God. And I don't think that i want to mix my intimacy with god and a human right now because a i'm human. still <laughs> yeah, a I'm human. Still, a human. just a human i'm still forming <laughs> my intimacy with god though mm-hmm. and i realized if i don't have a good relationship with god how in the world am i going to have a good relationship with a human like jesus who loves me good unconditionally point. no matter what the heck i do whether i don't spend enough time with him or like I st- do something I shouldn't. How am I going to have a good relationship with a human, a guy, if I don't have a good relationship with God? So I really need to build myself in that. And what if I'm not what uh, my future husband wants right now? Mm-hmm. Right. And what if so you want to be your best self? Yes, for them. exactly. And he's probably not the best he's probably not the best match for me right now either and so it's also about development and just waiting on god's time yeah <laughs> but i've talked a lot so no, what are yeah, your thoughts no i i 100 agree when the time comes god will reveal the man you're supposed to marry mm-hmm. to you mm-hmm. yeah yep. or the woman or well, the in wom- your case you know, well, I <laughs> I know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> no i actually like there's a joke there's a joke there's a joke well you and i are really making a lot of jokes on this podcast <laughs> we are I don't know. Is no, it, I'm tired. It is, it is a really Frenchman for you too. No, yeah, I was tired. I'm tired, so that's probably why. Yeah, and these are funny. These are big night last night. About too. What was last night? Fancy yeah, what beach. was last night? Fancy beach. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was still going. I it used to was love going to the beach. I, Maybe yeah. it's where you'll meet yeah, your yeah. future spouse. Uh, there's not a whole lot of chicks that go there. All I wasn't talking about a chick. Oh, you're right. <laughs> JP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. He's probably <laughs> listening. Yeah. JP, I, I know at least Lucas is listening. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, if you're listening, tell, tell JP we just said that. <laughs> no, this is a joke. Oh, this is a joke. <laughs> it's okay, William. You can be yourself around us. Why, thank you. That's very kind of you. It is. But let's talk about another group of people that thinks that they're being themselves when actually they're just destroying modern dating. Yeah, be yourselves homos. by changing everything about you. Yeah. Change your whole gender. That's how you be yourself. Be yourself, but chop yourself up at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. And do the same thing to your kids. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, bring the kids into this, obviously. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like Hitler, if you want to control the nation, you have to control the next generation. You know, Abby, I don't know what it is with you and Lillian and Hitler, but one of you will bring well, up Hitler every political <laughs> the Hitler conversation we have. Every debate. Lillian it's will just be like, just what? what, what will you, just be like, what's with the obsession with TikTok Hitler, TikTok huh? influencers hmm? are like the Hitler youth. I mean, <laughs> if it, Abigail if does have blonde hair. Fit. Oh, oh, but, but, boy, what j- I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay. There's a connection. There. I mean, she is very that white. That is a joke. I'm sorry. If the shoe fits, <laughs> or both your comment and mine about Hitler. But I mean, you gotta learn from history, and he's like, that's a good it's one point. of the most awful events in history recently. Well, right. So right. yeah, and it's a pretty obvious consequence. But yeah. anyway, that's not the point. You know, I think that we should actually compare the LGBTQ movement more to Stalin because Stalin barely had, like carries any blame in modern mm-hmm. society like it's hitler 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 it's, it's hitler, hitler, this, hitler, hitler, hitler that hitler, hitler. look yeah. stalin probably killed more people but oh, he the did. thing is he fought for what was thought of as the greater good at the time mm-hmm. and right now he point. actually had a bit of a moral compass culturally it's like 
uh, yeah, we're going to fight for, uh, I don't know, like, uh, women's rights, I guess, trans rights, I guess. Like, it's not actually helping anyone. It's actually no. destroying well, society. Well, it's the social but media but norm. They kill but people. It's, yeah, it's the social media norm, but it's not... It's not most of the population. Like it's a very it's small just the loud percentage. people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. the loud people who have no lives. Exactly, because all, all the, the normal people the who don't believe in that crap. Yeah, the ones that sit on their couch and need to go working, to therapy, working, making money, just living That's their lives, raising their families. Exactly, but these people have no life, and they exactly. mooch on like their parents. And that's why they have the time to go on the internet. That's why and come I don't up trust with these anybody on social things. media because they're just sitting there like thinking they're the next big philosopher right next thing. how to make like, everything racist yeah. yeah yeah well it's sad because the lgbtq plus movement is like a total uh reflection evil reflection of the family right because yeah. they're it's all about acceptance oh uh, we'll accept you for who oh, you and are love. we love yeah. you like yeah you're amazing just so however you feel right whereas family a healthy family they'll accept you and they'll love you obviously there's, there's still also some discipline yeah. yeah yeah he who and spares so the rod hates his child yes but yeah, they're we'll taking exactly. exactly so that's like part of the dynamic of a healthy family so they're taking and twisting yeah the pieces they like and turning it into something that's twisted and evil and but it's so sad to see all these people suffering because it's mm-hmm. a total attack on family because when you have an unstable nation that and an unstable family, then that's the format of heaven, right? It's family. Exactly, you have yeah. the two parents and then you have the kids and yeah. you raise the children up to become followers of Jesus and then they influence the next and so on and so forth. So really by attacking the family and being like oh yeah all family dynamics are okay you're attacking the kingdom of heaven because that's not how god intended it one and it's a sacred thing because it's literally the words of god that came out of his mouth and with creating humans and it's terrible to see because people are always like oh no you don't need i didn't need a mom or i didn't need a dad and oh, well you're on tiktok in bikinis yes, so right and right. fatherless you, behavior you yep. <laughs> do need a mother and you do need a father even like yes yeah, single parenting is a thing and people do come out of that relatively okay yeah. but when it's you, not ideal though. it's not ideal exactly it's not how we, rec- we were created to be yeah but the past century like the past hundred years has really been pushing a different family dynamic for sure mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and i think that in some ways, I'm gonna anal- I'm gonna make an analogy here. It's like a computer. You have your computer, right? And the computer is American society. And right now we have this little spinny, you know, the spinny pinwheels, the the little yeah, the little things that mean little that your computer yeah. is having trouble. <laughs> That's like LGBTQ <laughs> because rainbow. it makes your computer rainbow, freeze yeah. up. It means that something's not right. Your computer isn't destroyed yet. It's still working, but it's really like, you know, it means that something not good is going on. And eventually, it's just going to take over more and more of American society and just kind of corru- cor- uh, corrupt more and more files if we're talking in computer mm-hmm. terms. Mm-hmm. And eventually, we're just going to crash. America is going to crash um, or at least turn into, I don't know, some kind of... Or they'll all die out. Dystopian state. <laughs> well, it you know. Like smile on your face. <laughs> yeah, you, you really like that idea, yeah. don't you, Anna? <laughs> Makes sense. None of them are having kids or, or they're killing them, which is awful. But, like, really? I mean, at yeah. some point, it's, yeah. Which is why we need the government public school system to um, hijack the straight oh, yes. family children and turn them oh, into communists. Yeah. But how does that affect I modern never day? Going to right? school. Like we've, I feel like every how podcast we, we say something wait, no. about homosexuals, but at the end of the day, well, let's you're tie very this back to dating. Based. See, wait, more gay people means less competition for me. <laughs> so maybe this isn't such a bad thing after well, all. You know I'm what's just saying. so sad? Like I'm not saying anything against you or any other males but like the gay men always have the best style like not always but I like that stereotypically a lot I of guess gay men have yeah. good style and but they dress like women <laughs> well, well wait no i'm not gonna i'm not dressing like a woman no but i see good. what you're saying yeah, yeah and it's they're labeled gay because they have feminist like they it's also feminine. feminine. Yeah. yeah, it's because they don't have to like have the values that men have. Like they don't have to be always like the, 
Yeah, there's like a pressure the on men in society. Right, and since they're gay, right. they think they don't have those responsibilities, yes. so they can focus on things that women tend to focus more on, like their, yeah. you know, style and stuff like yeah. that. Well, and then it's back to, sorry, to stray away from dating a little longer, but it's back to the, um, it always comes down to the LGBTQ on this podcast, but, you know, yeah. it's fun. <laughs> That's <laughs> so true. We talk uh, about... Every LGBTQ time, every movement. time, yeah. all the time. But it's the it's very prominent. Yeah, you have to be okay with the masculine woman and the um feminine feminine man. man. Thank you. Yeah, them boys. But <laughs> personally, like my brothers, they are going to think they are going to be very. They're going to treat their future girlfriends very differently. Like they're both going to treat them well, but like. Ellis, my brother, is a little more masculine, right? Yeah. Not a little more, but he's like very he walks masculine. He with like a log sometimes. Right? I'll just yeah, see yeah. like yeah. inside with like a log. He goes, his Look, I dream this. is to go, is to, his dream in terms of marrying someone is to have a woman to adventure with, right? right? To yeah. go. That's so sweet. Yes, he wants a cabin in the woods. <gasps> and it's that's perfect the for sweetest him. thing. And then my younger brother, Caleb, he is very style oriented. He's a little more on the feminine side and he's his dream is to be basically live in an hgtv home <laughs> oh. with a wife who loves style and all these things but don't he worry also caleb won't have any trouble finding one <laughs> <laughs> but uh so it the culture around dating and lgbtq plus has a lot to do with it because people's ideals and people's personalities and people's wants for relationships are being twisted into something they're being told this is who you are because you have this right right mm -hmm. and it's taking away from it's taking away from someone they're supposed to be with i don't exactly agree with like predestination of who you're going to end up with but uh it takes away from a relationship like the greek myth right where yeah. at the beginning zeus had uh, had created the humans and they had two heads and mm -hmm. they were together and then they were too powerful so they split them apart and now they're all looking for their other half right and then in percy jackson it says that nico never was fond of that because myth because he's, he's gay gay but it's the same Just idea like, like you're hey, taking bro. away from a power couple if you will because their interests were turned and said no because you're a little more feminine you're gay, yeah, right? Like, it's perfectly right. okay for guys to, like, pink. Like, stop yeah. telling them yeah, it makes no, them gay. Yeah, that's fine. Here's the problem I have. They say, like, oh, gender roles are, like, nonsense. Like, they say, oh, stereotypes, you get rid of them. Guys are allowed to like pink. But as soon as a guy likes pink, you say he's gay. Yeah. You say he's a woman. That, yeah. That's something that's always like, confusing Or on the opposite yeah. end of the spectrum. Like, you have, like, the, the um, conservatives who are so... Like so happy to be MAGA people, and they're just yeah. like, you know what? If my son likes pink, I'm going to disown him because I'm going to buy into the left <laughs> yeah. lie that that makes him a woman. Yeah. Like, no, it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. That's something that's always confused me, though, is that like, how do feminism and LGBTQ politics fall into the same side of the political aisle? Because, they don't. Like, and when you when you have someone who realizes that, you get J.K. Rowling. Yeah, yes. exactly. Who's yeah. canceled? Because mm -hmm. well, not really. They're, they're, they can't they're actually her. drastically kind different of. ideologies. Because like feminism puts out the idea that there are no de differences between men and women besides biology. Like they're virtually mm -hmm. the same. That's right? true. And okay. then, That's a good point. Yeah, and then in LGBTQ, they're like, oh, you know, if you're a girl who likes trucks and you know more manly stuff, then you're actually a guy trapped in a woman's body. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. if they're the like, same, then you don't need to transition. Exactly, yeah. yeah. What's the what's right. the point? That is if such gender's a, a construct, point. why are you encouraging people to change their gender? Like, exactly. if gender doesn't exist, why are you having this whole so show about it? It's so inconsistent, which you is change why your you know body. it's BS. As far yeah, as I know, logical. most people who actually perform surgeries on themselves, they only change to one other gender, right? Right. Yeah. That's true. Yep. It's not like there are a billion others that they can you choose from. You don't need from. surgery to be non-binary. Well, that's yeah, you the, just identify as that. that's that's the so weird else. thing is the different groups in the LGBTQ plus movement don't genuine don't support each other usually. Yeah. Well, you know, you have the and they contradict logically. Them. Yeah. 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 And they contradict each other all the time. Well, you right? have like gay people who don't like the greater LGBTQ community. Yeah, there are a lot of conservative They're like, Stop gay putting people us together. out there. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird world we live in <laughs> it is it's messed up ain't that the truth yeah it's a world of you can't insult someone or else you're mm -hmm. gone 
Yeah. Right. Nope. But yeah. And at this you point, you kind of need to install people sometimes. It's for the greater good. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, facts. I agree with that. <laughs> I mean, iron sharpens iron, right? So exactly. if you're never yeah. questioned, if you're never uh, put on the spot, and if you never have to articulate your opinions and your ideas, then you'll never be forced to grow. Right. Yeah. It's like um, if someone like you know is overweight. Like every time you tell them, "Oh no, you're in great shape. You don't need to work no. out. You don't need to get healthy." You're hurting them. Yeah. yeah, like it's that doesn't mean becoming more. No, you be you're validating. Yes. You're yeah, validating exactly. their well, no, unhealthy you're just, lifestyle. Yeah, like you shouldn't be a jerk about it. But every time you say, "Oh, you don't need to work out. Your body's perfect how it is." Like that's oh. actually hurting them. Like yes. they need to so hear that over I'm, the body positivity movement. Yes. Oh my Same. gosh, I'm just like, helping you, you get in shape to yeah. be on but my 600 pound life. Like if you really care about someone, you're gonna help them improve themselves because no one's gonna be perfect. Yeah. And you know what? If your priority isn't being healthy then that's your life. Right. Like, yeah. if you don't want to go to the gym every day and lose poundage, then that's on you. I really don't care. That's poundage. your life. <laughs> poundage. But, <laughs> but you really don't need to support that lifestyle. And you don't even need to support my healthy lifestyle. Like, we're each individual, and who yeah. cares? But then, you know, we have to do what's best for everybody. So Not best for their feelings. You're right, you're right. But, like, the masks. Like, I'm wearing a mask to protect you right you. so and i need to if you don't wear yeah. a mask you're killing grandmas yes. on oh my gosh that <laughs> campaign you know i didn't wear no mask but both of my grandmas are still alive <laughs> <laughs> yep Wait. and i don't my, know if both my grandmas are that. dead you killed my grandma i actually Sorry. could never wear masks because i fainted like, oh i like i would fall into stuff in stores and i'm always like i mean maybe i'll kill someone that way yeah <laughs> yeah my uh a uh, family friend she almost drowned when she was younger so she can't tolerate anything near her face oh. so because otherwise she would like have a panic attack right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so due to the trauma she couldn't wear a mask but that was a whole thing she has some crazy stories like this one lady got up in her face and was screaming in her face like i'm sorry i'm trying to stay six feet away from you mm-hmm. yeah also if you can smell something through a mask How's it helping with germs? Really? Well, yeah. especially, you no, that? especially a virus, because a virus is the smallest They're single tiny. cell. I yeah. thought organism. COVID could go through porcelain. I think yeah. it can, yeah. So oh. Yeah. You're not helping anyone. <laughs> just don't that. sneeze on people. You're fine. Wait, like, also, I've had just, COVID and three also times. Wash your hands. Yeah. Like I've had COVID three times. I'm fine. I've had it twice. Uh, I don't know about twice. that one. Anna. It got more mild each time. I think yeah. it's changed. Well, not drastically. And well, okay. You we didn't know focus on dating because we got way off topic. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. Wait, this is this ended like two years ago. We don't need to talk about <laughs> yeah. this. Right, it never started. Like it's never literally, really who, a problem. Literally, who cares about yeah. this anymore? Yeah, yeah. COVID. Zone, but man. back to dating, feminism, and the LGBTQ plus community. I mean, at the end of the day, we're witnessing the destruction from the outside of dating, like yeah. from the outside of straight dating. That is. We're witnessing the destruction by the gay people, the lesbians, whatever else, the unnatural sodomists. And then we're yeah. also witnessing the destruction of straight dating from within the people of straight dating with mm-hmm. girls who have too high standards and people who can't realize that they're being dumb and that their boyfriend shouldn't be fine with them having OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you know the saying, pride comes before the fall? Yeah. In the very literal sense, every nation that has like started to accept that like ancient Rome, like gay used to be a big thing back then and then it fell and it's kind Hmm. of a literal thing in america like there's pride going on right now and right that's because because that that ideology inverts the family unit which weakens the nation right makes the men more feminine Mm -hmm. the women more masculine and that's not how god designed us to be so they're not going to be able to fulfill those roles Mm -hmm. properly and then down goes the we're nation. not gonna have our gun loving rednecks exactly. anymore so the government's gonna be able to get into exactly. what they want well, they'll be gun loving well, rednecks as long as i'm around that's the thing there is True. a structure for men and women like women sure there's the odd woman who wants who can be in the military right mm-hmm. me personally i can't be a, i'm not cut out for the military are you kidding me mm-hmm. absolutely <laughs> not See, like yeah. the standards for men in the military and women in the military are like so different no yeah they, what? they, lo- the they, they lower, lower it the so much men for women. Yeah, like they have to do like five pull-ups he- he- or something? yeah here's the thing like if a woman i don't think women should go into the military or at least go into like combat 
But if you are gonna go into the military as a woman, as you should. There. You need to be as strong as yes. the man. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to do as good as yeah. the job. Well, and that's why you keep the standards the same for both. Exactly. Of them, so that any yeah. women who do get in, yeah, military, in the military, there should yeah. be like because no, you don't want the best men and the best women. You want the best of the whole. You want the group best because you're like yes. soldiers. Yes. Yeah. Well, and if that means less women in the military. Who that's cares? If you have strong like, women who want to fight, as long as we have the best of the guess. best, then we'll be good. Yeah, okay, we, that's what's important. Yeah, I have. Uh, my Not family individual. has a family friend who's like an adopted sister to me, basically, and she won drill sergeant of the year. No, and it can happen. She yeah. can. She is not traditionally feminine. She has her feminine traits, but she is cut out to be in the military. Yeah. I am not at all. So you it's really have to, women. yes, and you have to gauge yourself, but there is the idea of the man providing for the woman, and we have to be okay with that, and we also have to understand that it's not degrading to one or the other. Exactly. No, right? Yeah. It's just their roles. Yeah. And, and how they can, like, the gender roles are, are a thing. They're yes. legit. Actually, gender roles are good. Yes. yes, it keeps no, it's order. biological. And, dis- and destroying like, yeah. gender roles, I think, is actually genuinely sexist. I think that I yeah. think that at the end of the day, you can bend gender roles, and we see that all yeah. the time. Yeah, like, yeah. Yes, you, you see, can. But you, you don't want to destroy them. Are, well, there's a sliding scale, yeah. right? Because you're saying it's they're not like strict spectrum. rules. The guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. There's variations in men and women. There are women mm-hmm. who are like more physically fit who will like that more and there mm-hmm. are some women who like the more traditional sense of just staying yeah. at home and I'm doing down, all the housework yeah, i'm down with being and, like not even wanting to work just staying home all day yeah i'm done yeah. with uh staying home and making food and yeah yes, vacuuming same. he can work and then come home and do the laundry and then i can like do what i want to do in terms of family but it's also like we've been saying a partnership right exactly yeah. Yeah. so it really comes down to the individual and it really comes down to what god's calling you to be because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you have people like well, there's a lot of differences between us in that sense because like i'm not career oriented at all i'm going to college so i can make money with my family but like i I have things I'm good at, but like my goal in life is to get married and have kids. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of women feel that way, but they're not encouraged to say it all the time. Yeah. What yeah. But it's like, do is wait until they've built a successful career and they're too old to have yes. children. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just depends on your goals. Like why don't, people here, why don't you have kids at 20? By the time you're 40, they'll all be ready to right, then live you can on go ahead and work. Then, like, then I think it's career. Yeah, if you you know, get, yeah. If you have kids younger, work for 20 like years, retire. Time. Nowadays, you're set. it's yeah. difficult to like keep a family going on like one wage like it certainly can happen yeah but it's like very hard sometimes that's why a lot of two people work most of the time right so but there is that time period where your kids are young and it's so much more important for them to especially important than for them from like infanthood to like i would say like middle school like the start of middle school is the the mom needs to be home to like take care of them and nurture them and Mm -hmm. make sure that they're you know happy and and healthy mothers can work from home that, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Just, that's what. That's the a, one good thing about COVID. Yeah, is that now yes. we can do that. Like, yeah, yeah the, there's so many options now. Like, um, my brother Joe, he works from home a lot. Yeah, as, as part of his job. So, because like his job, you, it's not. He can home. go into an office, but it's not necessary to yeah. do his yeah. work. Same with my dad. My mom actually got a part-time job bookkeeping for a small oh, wow. business. Yeah. So she's still working and making money, not to the same degree my dad is, but she is still. And she is very involved in our family. So, mm-hmm. it again, mm-hmm. what are you called to? And what's your partnership look like? What are you right. going to do as partners to provide for your family? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what it all comes down to. Whether yeah. you're dating or married. Or, or whether you're 75 or even whether you're... So, what? Huh? That doesn't make sense. I didn't say anything. Even if you're single? You said even if you're single. She just said it all depends I may, on who your partner is. I may have, well, Jesus may, can be your yeah, partner. Jesus is your partner. Oh, well, okay. Jesus, Jesus is, is your partner third wheel. until you find... Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. No. <laughs> we'll cut this bit. No, Jesus, Jesus no, we won't takes cut this the bit. wheel. Really? No, we'll leave it in. We like stuff like this. Okay. Anyway, that's where we're going to leave it for today, though, WS yeah. Podcast listeners. That was a good one. It's it was a good awesome. one. It's been awesome. Thank you both yeah, for coming really yeah, Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you for having us. We'll have you on again after your... Um, excursion. Um, yeah, I enjoy giving my opinion. Me too. I to anyone who I have listen. loved talking about people. this. Yes, this yeah. Is, yeah, it's been nice. percolating in my brain, and now I have an outlet. I mean, first you told me that you weren't sure if you really wanted to come on because you Isaac, just didn't know. Don't guilt me about that. people again. are decent, but now you're like, oh yeah, I'll come on. In fact, when I asked you to come on, you said yes before I finished the question. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> yeah. 
All right, you listeners. Guys are good. Thank yeah. you for listening. Yeah, and thank you yes. to our wonderful guests. And yep. Will and I will see you next time on the W Ritz podcast. Yep.